it snowing. Looks like it's that time again to, to talk about uh, the Academy Award nominations. Even though uh, both Dennis and I recognize that the Academy Awards is a sham, that, uh, you know, it's shamelessness incarnate, uh, you know, looking yeah. at it every year, you know, you have to just kind of hold your nose. It's a guilty pleasure, you know, that kind of thing. The Oscars are brought into the discussion. Whether or not they're respected isn't the issue. The fact is they are reference points. Absolutely. They are brought in uh, comparatively. And it's always, of course, not hip to say that the Oscars have any kind of uh, value, even in a cultural sense. It's not hip. There are people who come to the site, you know, and they talk like, you know, they're making some major intellectual revelation by saying the Oscars are a joke. Okay. What else is new? We know that already. We're just having fun. This year, in their infinite wisdom, the powers that be in Ampus uh, Academy of Motion Picture threw nine Academy. movies at us. Whether you put 9, 10, 11, 12, 15, or 100 films into it, they've only nominated five directors. And five directors basically you know, throw us in the pointing direction of those five films being the five films that the Academy are really interested in. And as we all know, the five directors were Woody Allen, Terrence Malick, uh, well, how did we say his name? Michelle Hazan... Michelle Hazanavicius. Yes. So basically, we're really looking at five films going for the, for the, for the big prizes. Would you agree which... that, the, that any film that didn't get a director's nod would be out of the running with the no. possible exception no. of the help. There's, yeah, I, right. uh, yes, right. I'll agree that with you 100% right. on that. There, there, that seems to be the only dark horse of the ones that didn't get nominated for Best Director that, will, that, that could actually make a big splash. Would you say it's safe to assume that in all probability uh, the sixth nominee for director was probably uh, Tate Taylor from The Help in yeah, all might probability. Have been. Might yep, have yep, that's all it would take with two bite at the top. Well, Mrs. Yeah. Enforcer, we should get some more booze yeah. in here for uh, adult beverage. You know, as if Lucille Mrs. wants him, for, as if Lucille wants him, you know, beaching himself on a fucking couch. You bring money or do I got to pay for it? <laughs> I also brought the Xanax just in case, you know. So, yeah. <laughs> if the artist was an Oscar, an Oscar film, why is it winning all the critic awards before the Oscars? The Oscars is only going to be the icing on the cake. The Oscars, as of late in previous years, have been very, very leery to oppose the critics. Last year, of course, was a major exception when they basically told the critics to shove it by anointing the King's speech to Best right, Picture right. after every organization under the sun was saying the social network was the Best Picture. A lot of people are calling this film a gimmick film, you know, that it's a silent movie about the death of silent movies, you know, and that's the, the hook, you know, it's, you know, it's a film that has no, no dialogue at all, it's shot in black and white in, you know, the original 19... 20s or 30s aspect ratio and there's the gimmick uh, you know it had big emotions i mean it was a feel-good movie you know it stirred you you know to high levels it brought tears to your eyes it, it you really felt that you saw something that was meaningful and something that was profound we saw it with your children i'm saying to myself how brilliant is this you know the guy's making a silent film about the silent film era it's vibrant Filmmaking with a with a flash of originality, you know, it, it it does a lot of things that other films wouldn't dare take on. It's very very bold and audacious. It's not lazy to why because it borrowed Bernard Herrmann's uh, Vertigo excerpt near the end. You know, so what? You know, that actually enhanced the film. There's an opportunity that these directors will open up a whole new door to these these younger film goers. You know. But I'm thinking the way that the Academy thinks, and you know how they think as well as I do, that the only other film that can come in and wipe this Best Picture prize out is The Dark Horse. And The Dark Horse would be The Help. It's a little tricky if the Best Director. I'm going to say it's yeah. close between Hazana yeah. and Martin Scorsese for yes. you go. But I'm going to say that the artist has enough clout overall to take the two major prizes. The Academy might want to make a point of splitting them up 
in favor of Martin Scorsese for Best Director because the Academy's been hurting over that award a couple of years ago for Scorsese for Director for The Departed. Yeah. In essence, what they were trying to say was the Academy never felt right about giving him that award. It, we all knew it was a payback. He won picture and director for one of his lesser films. And now the Academy might be looking to actually give him an Oscar for director on merit. In other words, you made a great film, it was a great piece of direction, and you are winning it legitimately. You know? And I think they've also kind of felt that Scorsese was kind of hurt over the fact that he had won it for The Departed as kind of a gift all those years ago. So there is that idea that you know they could split picture and director this year. Yeah, of course, remember that if it does split, it's going to be... Uh, it's going to go against uh, another precedent, and that is that just three weeks ago, the Directors Guild, which is a major, major harbinger of the way the Oscar vote will go. They haven't always been the same, but usually they are. The Directors Guild gave the Best Director Prize to Hazana No, 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 no. So he is going in as a substantial favorite. It's so interesting that in a year where everybody is praising, you know, the... The, the heavy favorite, which is a silent film. Here comes Terrence Malick, who basically made a silent film as well, you know, and answered a lot of the big questions. You know, this brought in the Big Bang Theory and, you know, and big questions of life. Yeah. And questions of life, you know, as it's shown in a small Texas town. It featured some incredible performances. In the, you know, the young boy, uh, Scott McCracken, Hunter McCracken, Hunter McCracken yeah. was just spectacular. I mean, I, I, I thought that maybe that was the best performance by any actor or actress in any capacity right. in any role this year. Uh, and it, of course, it's beautifully photographed. You know, it's a real pulp. And I, I, you know, I talked about it at the site. I said it was a musical symphony. It was told in musical uh, you know, there were, there were different movements in that symphony in the supporting actor category, even though there's a nice a little quiet sentiment for Max von Sydow's deaf and dumb type of performance in Extremely Loud, and he was very affecting. You know, what a, what a wonderful opportunity to give a man like Max von Sydow an Academy Award. They'd love to do it, except that the award is already spoken for, and it's spoken for by another sentimental choice, who happened to give a great performance? Critics gave him awards for months, right. and that's Christopher Plummer, Aka, Captain Von Trapp, The Sound of Music, who uh, won uh, who won his second nomination this year. He was nominated the year before for The Last Station as Tolstoy. And I think I read somewhere where they were looking for a role to give him after he got the nomination for The Last Station that he could finally win his Oscar. They found this uh, boy, aging gay him. man role right. for him, and you know, he was a knockout. I mean, he won, as I say, he won critical awards. He, by any barometer of measurement, he gave one of the very best performances of the year in any category. Yes, I agree. And he is a shoe in for that award. Well, I, I, do you I'm think totally there's any agreeing. chance he's going to lose? No, no, I think this is a clear-cut case where the, yeah, yeah, the landslide has happened. You know, And you can call it sentimental if you want. <laughs> How old is he? 81, 82 years old, whatever he is. You know, uh, it, it, Sure, you could easily call this sentimental, but after you see the performance, there wasn't an ounce of distruth in that performance that you, you, you could wrap him on the knuckles for. I mean, every moment that he's in that that film is right and it's proper and it's and it's it's truthful you know and I, I, I hate to say it but you know I mean living in the area that we live in I see a lot of men like that you know I see a lot of people like that over in the city and he nailed it in the lead acting category uh, for a long time it was thought that Brad Pitt was finally gonna win his Oscar now, Brad Pitt you know America's fair and boy for Moneyball. Remember, he was in two films this year where he gave great performances. The Moneyball as the eccentric general manager Billy Bean, and of course in Tree of Life in, in a seminal performance. Uh, then it started to look like the award was going to go to George Clooney, who is a Hollywood favorite, one of the most popular statesmen in Hollywood. It helped that he gave what probably was the best performance of his career in The Descendants. You know, it, was a, it was a deeply moving performance. There was a lot of soul to it. There was a lot of charisma. He was very he, funny you know, too. And, and yeah, he, it was you know a lot of humor there. I, the point is that uh, it looked like that the award would swing towards Clooney. Then he won the Golden Globe uh, last month, and then everyone assumed 
Then came the, the Screen Actors Guild Award last two weeks ago. And lo and behold, the power of the artist prevailed. Jean Desjardins, who plays the central role, you know, in the artist, you know, again, there's, you know, charisma to spare. You know, he was just wonderful. And um, now we have a, a situation where uh, after winning the Screen Actors Guild, which of course has the most voting members of the Academy by far, right? Uh, we would assume that it He's could have been line. a close vote, sure. but are oh, now are, are the producers and the directors and the technicians, are they going to overturn what the actors no, came up no, with never. and go with George Clooney? No. Well, the point is that <coughs> it's going to be close in all probability, but we, we, we kind of, I think Dennis and I seem to think that Jean de Jardin is going to carry the day. The worst snub of the year was probably in the actors race where they completely ignored Ma Michael Fassbender for a he was phenomenal totally agree with you he was that. in Shane, he was in Jane Eyre, he was in A Dangerous Method the Cronenberg movie. Where was his name on these awards? I think nothing. He to was be missing. totally honest with you, yeah. I think what happened with him and, and the Academy was he flooded the Academy with so many films they just couldn't fi figure it out so and they you just know what? them away. The artist uh, <laughs> Berenice Bejo and Octavia Spencer, the help, are going to fight it out yes. for the Oscar. Yes, I'm going yes. to. I'm going to say I would like to see Miss Bejo win, but I'm going to. I'm going to lean and make a prediction that the Oscar voters are going to do what the SAG voters did and give the award to Octavia Spencer. You know as well as I do. The, the Academy also likes a photographic moment. You know, wouldn't it be wonderful to put you know the director? The actress and the actor of the Best Picture win all together up on the on the stage for that big you know, Kodak moment. And I think it's a good possibility. Not only that, but Miss Bejo is a looker, right? She's you know, as as a lot of the guys on the block say they like to <laughs> award you know fresh meat, you know, and she flits the bill. As far as Meryl Streep is concerned, I mean, come on, 18 nominations tells us she's one of the greatest actors actors coming out of the United States for. 40 years, you know. To me, this is a flawless performance. I didn't see anything wrong with it. The accent was on the money. Yeah, oh, very emotional, much so. The emotional yeah. aspect was, uh, was yeah. there. The physicality was there. It, it's a knockout performance. You know. Who else do you really talk about? Uh, I, I believe it's the best performance of these five. If I was, if I had a vote and bring in other names, yes, Anna Paquin. <laughs> and uh, the veteran actor from poetry uh, mm -hmm. and a few others would come into this into play here, mm -hmm. and Kirsten Dunst right. from Melancholia. But of these five, I think Meryl Streep's performance is top. So where was Tilda Swinton this year? Where was Tilda Swinton? Yeah, yeah that and arguably was, probably her best performance ever. You know, I mean, you know, I mean, clearly, yeah, yeah, clearly, she's she's the whole movie. I'm not a racist by any stretch of the imagination, but I mean, do you really honestly think that the Academy? will hand out two prizes to two women, you know, right. yeah, two, two African-American women, you know, for the same film, you know. I mean, well, they did it, remember, they did it two weeks ago, SAG did it. And remember, yeah, SAG, SAG. SAG, but yes, but SAG, you got to understand, SAG is the largest voting body in the Academy. The only way SAG could be overturned is if all those other guilds and all those other band together, usually that isn't the case. When you get that majority consensus, you know, that voices itself in the SAG result, usually that's pretty much the way everybody's thinking, or at least to a large extent. That doesn't mean that, that a lot of years there's at least not one SAG winner that goes down on Oscar. We've seen that happen a number of times. But, you know, you question the, the black performers. The point is that uh, we already know the help is a, is a darling of these people. Right. And there can't be no. any ensemble no, 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 awards, no, no. so what, that's what just I, the two ladies. What I was is that it's very rare that you see uh, you know, a, a black actor, more than one black actor, win in a particular yeah, yeah, I, I, The last I, time yeah, we yeah. saw that happen was earlier on in the decade when both Halle Berry and Denzel Washington took it. Right, right, and, right, right. and if you remember, there were a lot of gasps that year because they didn't think that would happen, right? Is it right. possible it'll happen this year? I think it's it probably will. But if it doesn't, I don't think we should be too surprised by it either. You know, I'm going to predict that 
the adopted screenplay is going to be between the adopted or the adapted. The adopted, the adopted screenplay. What did I say? That uh, between the Descendants and Moneyball. That's Alexander Payne, Matt Faxton, Jim Rash for the Descendants, and Aaron Sorkin and Stephen Zalian for Moneyball. It's really between those two. You go Ides of March and Taylor Tinker Sailors, uh, Soldiers by Taylor Howard. Tinker Sailors by I, Did I not rectify what I said? Give me a chance to do it. The possibility of him winning yeah. a second time. You know, I mean, yeah, you know. That's let's, why let's I think Moneyball's yeah. going to win. Yeah, I do too. I do too. In, I the, in, the, in the original screenplay, uh, you can pretty much count out Bridesmaids right. and Margin Call. And then it's between Midnight in Paris, A Separation, and The Artist. Most people believe the nomination for the separation is as far as it'll go, the Iranian film. They don't believe they're going to give it a second Oscar. So it's the artist, Michelle Azanavicius, and Woody Allen's Midnight in Paris. I'm going to predict they're going to give it to Woody Allen. I would rather see the artist win, but I think it's going to win in other categories. I think they're going to give the award to Woody Allen. And I would have to concur <laughs> as well. Uh, and, and 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 I think the reasons are pretty pretty obvious. You know, yes, maybe maybe the artist did have the better screenplay, but the fact of the matter is, is that you know Woody Allen has been pretty much floundering now for about ten or fifteen years, uh -huh. right? He's finally made a film that the critics really, really like, you know, and it seems like most audiences like a lot. He's Hollywood royalty, you know, of the of the best best kind, and he's you know he's considered one of the finest screenplay, you know, writers out there. He's one of the great screenwriters of all all time. You know, this might be their way of you know saying you know thank you for coming back in a big way and you know and doing what you used to do basically. The last question I want to ask is a very relevant question. What what do we what can we expect from Billy Crystal? <laughs> well, probably a hell of a lot better than uh, the, the, what the last couple of hours. Is he, is he capable of returning the show to uh, well, some well, kind well, of respectability? I mean, you know, I mean with, with the exception of the almighty Johnny Carson rising from the grave and coming in to best him. I mean, you, I mean, what have we seen with the hosts these past couple of years? You know, you know, David Letterman was an absolute disaster. You know, and that was last year. You know, who was it last year? I don't even remember who it was. Yeah, last you know year. what? That just goes to show. Oh, they was it a James, was it James Franco last yes, year? Yes, yes. You know, yeah, you know, and then you know, Whoopi Goldberg did it. And that was an absolute tra uh, tra I've always said, why don't we just do this? You know. Very simply, you bring in Oprah Winfrey. She gives a she gives a she gives a speech on the, the history of film, and then we just bat off the winners. You know, I mean, next, 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 next. Good, next. good idea. Uh, yeah. Let me just ask you.